Hello everyone and welcome to this Next.js and Contentful tutorial series where we're going to build this amazing and production ready job board. Um, before we jump into the um, actual implementation in the subsequent videos, I thought it would be a good idea to uh, do a walkthrough of what it is that we're going to build. So this is the final product, the final application, how it looks. I'm going to do a demo quickly, but before that I thought it would be a good idea um, just to uh, go through the tech stack that we're going to use here. So as you can see, as you saw from the, the playlist and the thumbnail, probably this is going to be you're going to be using Next.js. And who says Next.js also automatically says uh, React, right? And this is um, what we're going to use for building the pages, the components, um, and for styling, we're going to use Tailwind CSS. Okay, so these are the three main technologies we're going to we're going to use um, for building the the UI. But in terms of the data, because every application, most application need data, right? So we're going to use Contentful. Okay, so Contentful CMS, right? So that's where all our data are going to come from. Now, in terms of feature requirements, obviously, as you can see here, and let me refresh the page, right? So as you can see here, this is a job board, so we will need a job listing page, right? So, and for every job, we will, need, we will need to be able to click on the job and actually see details for that job, right? So like, as you can see here, if I go back to the home page again, and I click here on this other job, we can see all the job details for every single job, right? And for a specific job, we can see the company um, who posted the job. And for that company, we should be able to see all the related jobs of that uh, particular company, all the other jobs of the company in question, okay? Uh, categorized like this by uh, job categories, okay? And obviously, if I go back to the home page, uh, we should be able to search for jobs. So if I, for example, this job has Tailwind in it. So if I type Tailwind, I should be able to search and, and filter only the jobs that have Tailwind in it. And furthermore, I can uh, click here to just get the, 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 the featured ones. So if I remove this filter, you see, we still get the Tailwind uh, uh, jobs. Now I filter, I get the ones that are only featured jobs, okay? So just this shows you that the, the, the search bar and um, the filter, although they are different React components, as you can see here, different components, even on the UI, they are able to communicate. So that implies some sort of a no notion of a shared state uh, across the application. Um, um, and we'll, we'll have to we'll, 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 uh, implement that. So if I clear the, the filter here and I remove this, I show you the other filters. For example, here, if I, you can sort the jobs by different sorting um, um, criteria. So uh, as you can see, obviously we can also search, uh, filter the job by salary range. So here I want the jobs that are uh, within a, like five, uh, 50k to 100k right so we get all those jobs so if i add this filter we also get this other job here which is um above 100k a year if i remove the other ones you see we only get that one and only that right so now we have different uh, job types some are full-time part-time so if i get the contract ones only this one appears if i get the full-time ones only these ones appear okay so obviously we also have like so uh, filtering by seniority level. So some jobs are for tech leads, only this one, Dacket, uh, and, and it only for tech leads, okay? Uh, some are for junior engineers, like this one, okay? And last but not the least, we can also sort by, we can also filter by skills, right? So for example, if I add here, um, uh, Tailwind, you see, we get only the, 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 the jobs that have Tailwind, but I can add some more, filters i can add react you see we add automatically all the jobs that are also related to, to react and same thing if i add next.js but all the jobs that are next.js related are also uh, react related right so if i add tensorflow for ai jobs you see we get all the, the, the jobs that are related to ai if i remove obviously we can also remove the tags either from here like this or from here like this so if i click here to remove the tarwin jobs uh, they are, they're all gone. If I remove the React.js jobs, they're all gone, right? So, and that's how we can re we can uh, initialize, uh, reset 
all the filters like this and that's basically it that's the application we're going to build so as you can see it's fast beautiful um the ui looks uh very very clean and, and professional okay so obviously we can also deploy this uh to um to vercel or to netlify as you can see here this is the, the the version deployed on netlify okay and the version deployed on uh, vercel exactly the same functioning exactly like like uh, the one we just uh, look, had to look at on localhost right so simple uh, exactly the same application deployed to uh, vercel and netlify um so yeah this is it in terms of um, like the, the the feature requirements this is what we we want to build now uh like i like i, I can mention uh this we want this application to be uh, production quality and um, in order to achieve that we need to follow some guidelines okay so um first of all uh we want our code to be very reusable so if i go to the uh, to the code here at the moment i just want to show you i'm not going to jump into details but some guidelines the first one is that we want our next uh um components our next uh, pages to be very thin as you can see here the sole responsibility of for example the index page which is this page here um its sole responsibility is to fetch the jobs all this section here and to to fetch the skills right and pass them down to fetch the jobs to fetch the skills and to pass them down to a, a react component that's going to be responsible for doing the display right and why do we do this why we well we can have all the, the, the uh, everything that's happening here on in this page but the thing is if for whatever reason we decide to switch from next year to another uh, framework like for example remix which we're also going to cover on this channel well it's going to be very easy for us to reuse this component and just change uh, the way we pre-render the page right so uh, that's that's one of the reasons okay and also um in terms of our react components themselves um we want um um our components to be a single risk to have a single uh, responsibility right so as you can see here if i go to the um, uh, components layer you see we have some components that are related to data and even within those components you have different types so we have cards components details components and listing components right so for example to, just to show you here this is a card component okay this single one here on which i'm hovering right now it's a card component if i go on a specific job uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a detail component the job detail uh, component as you can see here job details um and if i go back uh, to the jobs the listing components right so this uh, basically it takes a list of cards it renders a list of cards elements and uh, that's 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 the list um uh, components now in terms of um uh, other types of like the data type of components are very dummy in the sense that they just take a particular um, um, uh, piece of information um, namely a job in this case and they're responsible for the display using Tailwind right so this is basically the components that are Tailwind heavy in terms of design okay um, now we have also forms so the forms as you can see this application has a lot of forms this is a form here uh, this is another form basically this is a bunch of forms as well so all our forms will live in the folder here called uh, forms and then um, yeah this differentiate they're very different to the data components because they have very different uh, res uh, responsibility and also we have the globals uh, basically the footer the header and the layout as you can see uh, an application this is the header obviously um this is um uh, you can you can turn this off if you if you don't want this and also um the the, the this the header and the footer okay and finally we have our ui components basically these components are are not necessarily uh fetching the data are not necessarily displaying the data but they are mainly responsible for some ui aspect right so um for example a loading spinner 
or the jobs page, which is not necessarily a data um, uh, component, but it's mainly responsible for um, like uh, putting different components together so that they will fit nicely. Okay, so this is it in terms of um, the React components. But one thing beyond even what we just covered now, one of the most important thing about our React components is that they should be, um, whether it's a, it's an actual Next.js page or uh, an, um, a component um, in the in the components folder, one very very important thing is that they should be completely, and that's perhaps the most important uh, implementation detail, is that our React our components should be totally agnostic of the CMS that we are using. As you can see here uh, on this uh, component, uh, which I'm using right now, there's no way to know that we are using the uh, uh, contentful under the hood, right? So you see, we just import our data source, we get the jobs, we get the job skills, and that's it. There's no way for us to know that uh, contentful is the, is, the, is the CMS powering the, the, the application under the cover. Right, so that's the biggest uh, implementation detail because um, Contentful is not going to be the CMS. The only CMS we're going to cover on the channel. We're going to cover all uh, other uh, headless CMSs that, that are out there. And the same application, we're going to build uh, the same apl application for different CMS. And, and, and as a matter of fact, we did. Right. So um, if, I, if you look at, for example, this environment variable uh, example file, Right, so we have, if you look at the data layer as well, we have already uh, um, Strapi and Contentful, right? So this this particular uh, tutorial series is covering Contentful, but we're gonna have other, other like a subsequent um, playlist covering Strapi, and we want um, very you want easy, very easily to be able to change uh, the data layer without changing a single line of code apart from this um apart from an environment variable right and and as a matter of fact let's do that right now i'm gonna go a bit like this okay so i can um go and change the environment variables this is just the example file and um this is the actual uh the actual uh, environment variables, right? I'm just hovering like this so you don't see my uh, credentials. So as you can see here now, this application uh, deployed is uh, using Contentful, right? So we're using Contentful, okay? What I'm gonna do, uh, I'm, I'm gonna terminate the application and change the environment variable to Strapi. And as you can see here, for example, you can see this job is Contentful Inc. Okay, I'm gonna Terminate the app and launch and change this to Strapi. Well, by the way, you need to terminate because uh, Next.js only loads environment variables on uh, uh, on the start of the app, right? So if I refresh the app like this, I restart the app and I click here, I go back to home screen. You see, we now have a different set of jobs and basically they are, they're coming now from Strapi and the application works exactly the same. Um, the application works exactly the same, but that, oh, except that the, the jobs are now coming from Strapi. As you can see here, this, this is a job from Strapi. And you see, in order to achieve that, it was a single line of code uh, in the environment variable files, right? So we changed nothing else uh, apart from this environment variables. And obviously, the data layer, that's where the, the, magic, the magic happens, right? So the data source, uh, we import the data source and this data source uh, is implemented in such a way that, um, for example, here um, we get the data, uh, like we, we import all the API that are contentful related. We import all the, the APIs that are Strapi related, but based on um, the environment variable that's going to be um, uh, considered, we're going to create a data source uh, object and that data source object is going to be exported. And that's what our index dot uh, JS is using here and all, all and, and everywhere else in our application where we need data. All right, so in our uh, other pages as well. So if I go to the jobs page, you see we import the data source. Nowhere in our application we ever tell um, uh, the app that we are using contentful. Right? And that's very important for us because as you can see here, uh, changing uh, between different um, um, CMSs is just a matter of switching 
a, 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 like an environment variable and that's it right so that's a big 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 um implementation um a detail for us and um i hope you like that so now in terms of now uh, an offset let's get that let's start getting a hand study so the final thing i want to cover in this introductory uh, tutorial is to um, do the scaffolding of the project so you can have a good starting point uh, and, and, and and be able to follow along with me so let's do that right now i'm going to close this up just so i can um, have the port um, um, available okay so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do i'm gonna install um the first thing you want to do if you're following with me if you want you want to um install take it right it's basically uh, a very nice um way to clone a repo okay uh with a simple way to clone a repo without getting the history of that repo okay and in this particular case we want to clone not only the repo but we want to clone a particular branch okay so every single branch everything that you're going to cover uh for every lesson in the tutorial you're going to find a particular feature branch okay so for the scaffolding in order to start with me we want to 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 to, to clone the feature branch tutorial one uh, hyphen scaffolding uh, that's the feature you want you want to you want to 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 get to to, to start for, to, to follow along with me and uh i've already installed dig it okay so to install that you just run this uh, npm command you can install it globally uh npm install uh dig it but after i've already done that so i'm gonna do here yeah, this is an empty folder i'm gonna now run the command to actually install it um the the the, the 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 project right so you run this command and you're going to find this command in the description uh the link uh to the to the, to the github repo with um, in the readme file in the readme section the the link to this um, uh, command basically it, it's it runs to the git the git command this is the username the the github username this is the contentful um, um uh, next year's tutorials repository name okay this is the repository name and then you have a hash hash symbol and then the name of the feature branch okay and this is um order where you want to dump the cloned version locally so let's run this command okay it's going to take me like all right now it's done it's completed all right you see we have our new folder here uh, which didn't exist before i'm going to cd into that folder and then the next thing we will have to do is simply npm run dev okay I run npm run dev uh oh sorry i first need to run npm i to install all the dependencies okay and npm i and then npm run dev and that's it right so if you go back to um uh here and we initialize like this we refresh bingo right so well done uh now you have the scaffolding you have everything ready basically this is going to be um um this is going to allow you to follow along with me it has already all the dependencies and the scaffolding ready and this is the canvas area where we're going to be building everything so this this is our canvas everything else here is just for promotion um uh, so that you, you can get in touch with us if you ever need um, uh, our help on a similar project project but everything uh, is going to happen in the in this gray area here uh, which we call the canvas okay so in the next uh, uh, tutorials uh, in the next lessons you're going to start filling this section this area with our actual components and uh, i hope you're going to enjoy the ride with me and thank you so much for watching so far and see you next bye